I'm Annalie, and I'm about to interview Kip Thorne. Kip is here in Sydney, Australia, attending a conference and giving a public lecture. I am here because my dad is attending the same conference. Kip is an expert in black holes, gravitational waves, and everything he calls the warp side of the universe. Hi, Kip. Hi, Annalie. So, good to see you again. Good to see you too. First question, what do you think about when you look into the sky and see the stars of the universe? Well, I think about all the things I don't see up there. <laughs> uh, the universe has stars, it has planets, it has uh, the sun and the moon, but it also has objects that are made from warped space and warped time. And th those objects are unlike anything you and I have ever seen. What would I understand in a warped space-time? Well, warped space is sort of like the surface of a, uh, of a trampoline. If you stick your fist in it, it bends down and it's warped. Uh, warp time just means that time flows at a different rate here than it does up at very high altitudes. If you have a clock up at high altitudes, it, uh, it ticks faster by about four parts in ten billion. So, for example, in black holes, the warp, uh, time is warped? Time is warped in black holes, and black holes actually are made from warp time and warp space. If you can imagine that. Made from warp time. <laughs> yeah, and warp space. Uh, because they're not made from matter. There's no matter there. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, time is warped. If you go down near the edge of a black hole, time flows more slowly there, enormously more slowly than here on Earth. A few minutes of time down there, if you were there, could be a million years back on Earth. So what would happen if I would fall into a black hole? Would I end up somewhere else in another universe? You'd die. I'd die. <laughs> Inside a black hole, there's something we call a singularity. Singularity is a place where we don't understand what's going on. But we do know that gravity becomes so strong there that it rips you apart. It will rip the atoms that your body's made from apart. It destroys matter, it destroys all forms of matter, and it even destroys space and time right at the center, uh, as best we understand it. And what exactly are cosmic strings? Well, cosmic strings are like violin strings that stretch across the universe, and if you pluck them, waves go traveling down these strings. Uh, the string bends and the bend goes traveling down it at the speed of light, at the fastest anything can travel producing gravitational waves, these ripples in the fabric of space-time, as they go. And those gravitational waves travel out and we want to see them. And if we see them, uh, we'll measure the precise shape of the gravitational waves and that will tell us about these cosmic strings. Now you might ask, why are these in cosmic strings interesting? Ask it. Why are these cosmic strings interesting? <laughs> They're interesting be because uh, many physicists think that the ultimate building blocks of all matter are strings that are so tiny they're smaller than the nucleus of an atom. They're called fundamental strings. And there is an idea and some equations to back it up that says that at the very beginning of the universe some of these tiny, tiny fundamental strings got inflated to cosmic size and those are the things that we might detect. If we can detect them, this could be the first test of people's ideas about fundamental strings, the, the ultimate building blocks of everything. And in what way do black holes and gravitational waves hang together? Gravitational waves, well gravitational waves are ripples in the fabric of space and time. Well, by that I mean something like the following. If you ha have a pond on a very uh, calm day or a lake, you stick your finger in the pond and stir it around, waves will go out on the surface of the pond away from you. The same way, uh, if uh, you have a black, two black holes that are going around each other, and each of them is made from warp time and warp space, they create ripples in, of warping, ripples like the warping on the surface of a pond that go traveling out through the universe, and those are what we call gravitational waves. In short, what actually happened at the Big Bang? Well, the Big Bang, the universe was born. It was created. It mm -hmm. came into being. Uh, but along with it, we think, came a big burst of gravitational waves. And these are the only kind of waves that are so penetrating that they could go through all of the matter between us and going back to the Big Bang unscathed. So they are a tool to see 
the birth of the universe. But the universe was the be the Big Bang was the beginning, as far as we know. So finding gravitational waves or detecting gravitational waves would answer the question of how the universe was born. Well, that's one of the things that we want to answer. Okay. It'll, it'll be that that kind of question will be answered by a mixture of seeing the birth of the universe with gravitational waves, seeing the, the products of the birth of the universe like you and me and trying to understand how that uh, ultimately came about mm -hmm. from the beginning of the universe, and theory, deep theoretical work like Einstein did. Uh, it, it is usually the case that you, the theory and these observations go hand in hand and they are the keys to understanding things in nature. Right. And how many detectors are there at this moment? Boy, how many detectors are there? So we, we have these giant detectors. There are uh, three of them in the United States at two different locations. There is one in Germany that's a joint German-British uh, uh, detector. There is one in Italy that's joint Italian and French. Uh, there's a, uh, a small one in Japan that's a precursor to a big one. Okay. There's a small one in Australia that we hope is a precursor to a big one. So now you can add it up how many there yeah. are. But they all work together okay. in a single network, uh, analyzing data jointly uh, to uh, try as a whole worldwide community of scientists, a thousand scientists around the world working on this, to try to detect these waves and interpret them, get the information that they carry about the birth of the universe and colliding black holes. Did you get into the field? I'm sure you got into it a while before it became so fashionable. Yes, well, I got into it when I was about your age. Okay. I, I read books about relativity when I was your age and got very excited. Well, not technical books. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, little paperback books okay. uh, about relativity, uh, comic books about relativity. Oh, okay. And, and uh, I got very excited yeah. and uh, I never grew out of it. And so, what are you hoping to see in the next 30 years? happen? What do you expect to happen? In well, I expect physics? that these detectors for gravitational waves will see these waves. They'll be used, the waves will be used to probe black holes so we can see how black holes behave, see their weird properties, watch black holes collide and create wild vibrations of warping of space and time. I expect that we will see the birth of the universe with these waves and we will come to understand how the universe was born how it was created in, in great detail at the very, very beginning. We'll begin to be able to answer questions like, what came before the Big Bang? So the big questions, the biggest questions about the universe are yet to be answered, and they'll be answered by your generation, not by mine, and I will sit back and watch and write about it when, when you and people of your generation are answering the questions. <laughs> Even after all the theories and all the experiments, can we really be expected to understand something as big as the universe? Well, we seem to have been very successful thus far with our huge optical telescopes. We see out to the greatest stretches of the farthest reaches of the universe, and we see the same laws of nature governing how uh, galaxies in the distant universe behave as govern us here. So we have every reason to believe from our observations that, uh, that we can understand the most distant reaches of the universe. It's just fantastic that, that we puny humans with the tools that we have developed are able to understand it, but I believe we can. So there you have it. Thank you so much for your time, Kip. There you have it, right from the expert's mouth. Thank you for joining us, and it's goodbye from Sydney. Yeah.